Hello there. Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us here at the Groomsmen. I'll be your host, Jonathan. Today I'm using Barbershop de los Muertos 3. This is by Murphy & McNeil. This is in the Aeon base. It's the ingredients list if you are interested. Uh, this is a, a cologne scent based off Curlane's Home Intense. Uh, it's a very, very bright uh, citrus, mostly orange citrus opening. It's a, definitely a cologne scent. You can tell that it's a cologne dupe. But it's a really, really bright citrusy cologne. I really like it. My wife, I prefer, I like it, Don't you know, not to hit it or anything like that. I do really, really like it. Uh, of Barbershop de los Muertos 2 and 3, I prefer 2. My wife prefers 3. Um, I think I'm going to get Barbershop de los Muertos 1 here and just have the whole set. Uh, I got it all whipped up here. I got a chisel and hound brush. This is kind of a smaller handle. Uh, it's got a 24 millimeter knot from AMAC shaving, I believe, on Etsy. Uh, silver tip. Very, very soft tips. Very, very soft brush at all. It doesn't have a whole lot of backbone to it, but because the knot is pretty dense and the loft is set pretty low, you can still get like a nice scrub. It's, but it's pretty, you can tell it's like pretty. I don't know, so silver tippers are just general, in, in my experience, the silver tips are usually really uh, kind of floppy. They don't have a whole lot of backbone unless you set them real deep. So if you set them too deep, you get the backbone, but then it puts those the, the hair bristles so close together that it ends up uh, being kind of a lather hog because the lather can't flow through. But this one is pretty perfect. I do really like this scent though. I don't know if I like it enough to get the EDP. My wife would probably like it if I got the EDP. Maybe that's a good enough reason all in itself. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. For the razor, using the PAA metaphor, stainless steel. It's based off of uh, a French razor, the Kirby. It's got a really cool, interesting lather channel on the way the blade is, is held in place. Um, this tip, obviously the handle is designed off the Gillette red tip, which is a pretty cool handle design. The color tip on the end comes off. You can either use it short like that if you want a shorter handle, or there's different colored tips. It comes with the, just a matching silver tip uh, or stainless steel tip. Well, they're all stainless steel, they're just color coded. Um, and then there's like five or six colors. I initially got the, uh, the turquoise. Because I wanted a green and they didn't have it, and I swear to God, like a week after I bought the turquoise, he came out with green. So then I, at some point, not right away, I waited until I was buying something else because it wasn't worth shipping to buy a $10 little tip. So, but at some point, I went in there and got the green one. Uh, using uh, another Gillette 7 o'clock blade, we're using these until I run out of them. Uh, I think I got, well, this one, which is brand new, first use, and then I got two more left in the tub. Talk about that in my last video. I'm just trying to do a little, I don't know, not an experiment. I'm trying to decide if I want to buy more. Metaphor, beyond having a really good price point for a stainless steel razor, I mean, $70 is so pretty hard to beat. It's really smooth. Really, really smooth. It's, I think one of the cool things about it is it's just fun to use. It looks cool, it looks unique. The handle design really stands out. The head design really stands out. Yeah, it's based off of a vintage razor. Uh, the Kirby. But I think he did the redesign in a way that kind of makes it stand apart. Like if you put them side by side, you can see the similarities in the head design, but uh, there are enough differences to kind of make the metaphor its own razor. It's just fun to use. I don't know, not all razors are fun to use for some reason.
The set strength on the the VDL M3, the PowerShell Velo 3 is, is pretty strong, actually. I'm getting like a nice scent. Uh, a lot of times I find that, for the soap at least, the scent will kind of die down a little bit on your face. But uh, I'm, this is scented perfectly. I can enjoy the scent the entire time of the shave. It's really nice and fragrant. You know, like that orange cologne scent. And it might just be the DNA of the fragrance that makes it a little bit more fragrant than, uh, I think even Barber Top Daily Smart does too, which I really like that scent, but there's not a whole lot while you're shaving. So far, I'm liking everything about this razor. It's there's no hunting for like a correct rate, like a, a correct angle where the head is shaped and the the way the blade comes out of the live channel. It's just you either feel the blade and it's very very minimal blade feel, or you don't. Like it'd be hard to because it's curved. It would be hard to ride the cap. Because then you're like, you have to have your handle so far into your face because of the curve. And then if you went too far, you just wouldn't feel nothing. I mean, it's just, it's just super easy to find and use. I'm not going to say it's impossible to nick yourself, but I would say it's one of the, the safer safety razors I've used. Kind of like the Henson, I mean the, the corners of the, the razor or the blade edge are underneath the corner of the razor itself. There's, you know, pluses and minuses to that. You're never going to nick yourself with the corner of the blade. Uh, you know, it reduces the incidence of nicks. Um, the other side of that is if you have facial hair, there's a, you know, a pretty good distance between the edge of the blade and the edge of the razor, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but not overcomable. I know PA just came out with another razor. The, uh, I know everyone was calling the bacon light. A bit of a, <clears throat> a mistake in the YouTube algorithm for the closed captioning. So he's calling it a, a bake light razor. It translated into bacon light. And now I can't even think of the actual name of the razor. Uh, no, I can't think of it. It's right there on the tip of my tongue. It's going to bother me. But anyways, it came out with a new razor. It's got a brass, a gold-plated brass top cap with some pretty nice scroll work on it. And then a Bakelite base plate and a Bakelite handle. I know Douglas over there at PA is a big fan of Bakelite. Um, I think the design is cool. Um, it was always he does most or all of his razors I think are based off vintage designs and the new one is no different it's also a vintage design but a very I guess not common one it's pretty cool but I guess there's some holes in the base plate that are meant to like dip your razor into like a bowl of water and the water goes in between the base plate and the blade and so then when you shave the water kind of comes out and provides extra lubrication kind of neat <clears throat> I'm not sure how that would translate into performance, if it would make a difference or not. 
Anyway, make it a little bit more messy because you have like water running down your neck. I'm already messy enough as it is. But it looked cool. Um, I'm hit and miss with big light razors. I just, I don't mind them. It's just that the weight kind of throws me off. And I always feel like I'm going to break them. I know big light in and of itself is a pretty sturdy material. And it's been around for longer than me. It's pretty sturdy stuff, but... You're doing this with like the edge of that blade kind of being so tucked back in there, the little... Kind of got to figure it out a little bit. It is interesting. He's got another razor too, I think. There was like two from one of the shaving get-togethers. Um, I don't know what, I can't remember what it was called either. But it had two base plates. It looked kind of neat. Kind of a hybrid, open comb, closed comb. Kind of like the R41 base plate, like that kind of look. Or like uh, the vintage Darwin. Uh, I don't have a Darwin, but I have a Asylum Duplica of one. So kind of like that, where it's a safety bar, but it's also got these, like, kind of teeth. I don't think he's released that one. I think it was just some that he let out at that get-together, or sold at that get-together, and they're still testing it, maybe. It looked interesting, though. I don't think that one had fake light. I think that was an all metal razor. But I could be wrong. I will say for a hit on the the metaphor, it's not the most efficient razor. It doesn't claim to be. Oh, I got a couple of weavers there. I do find myself when I use this razor, like it's super smooth, easy to use, dripping, shaving cream all over myself. I do find I wished it was like a little bit more efficient. I don't know how you would accomplish making this razor more efficient with the design of the, the cap and the face plate. That's it. Pretty good shave though. I'd say compared to the shave I did yesterday on camera with the the charcoal gets level two, I'd say they're pretty very similar in the level of efficiency. Both very smooth. They both do a really good job. It's not, you know, the most efficient. And, and neither is the charcoal gets level two. But really, really good. I think most people would like it. And it's a good price point. A heck of a lot cheaper than the charcoal goods. Stainless steel. I'm going to do a quick cold water rinse and we'll be back for a splash. Alright, I'm back. Thanks for sticking with me. Power Shop Delos Muertos 3. Uh, like I said, it's a cologne dupe of Guerlain's Home Intense. It's a very bright citrus 
uh, I keep saying citrus, it is a citrus Ford, but uh, orange in particular Ford uh, scent. Said it before, I really do like um, Murphy McNeil's aftershave splashes. Uh, their ingredients list is really, really nice. I know everyone's got their own feelings on what belongs in an aftershave and it should, it should just be alcohol and a little bit of fragrance or alcohol and menthol and a little bit of fragrance. Uh, I prefer some other stuff, some skin food, some things to help heal the skin and some things to help you know put some moisture back in your skin. And, uh, I think this one does a really, really good job. The, the aloe and the green tea extract, I really like green tea. The white willow bark, which really helps with irritation. I like it. I dig it a lot. But that was a shave. It was a great shave. The, the Metaphor is a pretty good little razor, especially for 70 bucks. I think the tips, if you want the different color tips, I think they go for $7 a piece. Don't quote me on that. Less than 10, um, but I think more than five. But a really good razor, a really great soap. I really dig the artwork that they, they put into this line. Uh, obviously the soap comes first right in the scent, but I think uh, artwork definitely does make a difference in my it, it influences purchases, I will say that. If uh, there's something with like really bad artwork, I might not buy it just because of that. Which is kind of weird, but it is what it is. But I uh, appreciate you tuning in. Hope you liked the video. Um, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you guys want. If you guys want to see anything new, uh, if you want a particular razor review, if I got it, I'll do it. Um, vintage, modern, what would you guys like to see on the next, you know, upcoming videos? Would you like me to go more vintage or stay modern? Um, let me know. I'd appreciate, you know, some input from you guys. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.